210 Boxing TV here at Sebastian Waters. Uh, former number one in the country, uh, USA Boxing 145 yes, and uh, 156 as well, right? Yes, sir. Now you're about to turn pro later on this year. Talk about the transfer from being the amateur to now trying to move to the pro and actually turning pro finally. Uh, just, um, it's, it's real, it's a little different. I mean, I mean, the little things, just uh, the sitting down on your punches, you know, not really thinking, talking, thinking about like how many points I have to score and stuff like that, just hitting a little harder, trying to hit a little harder. And just uh, slowing down, just mentally slowing down, and everything. Just but staying sharp, definitely staying sharp. For the people that don't know about you, uh, let them know your name and your amateur resume. Yeah, uh, my name is Sebastian Quadis. I'm a, a boxer turned pro. I'm a 12-time national champion. And I was number one in the USA at 45 for two years, and then two years for I won't be And you're from uh, Brownsville, Bronx, yeah, Texas, yeah, right? Nine, Texas. Nine five six. Yes, sir. Nine five six. Now, um, describe your fighting style, and who did you come up watching, and who are some of the fighters you try emulating? My fighting style, I would say, is just, I'm, I'm, a, I'm more of a boxer, but I'll change it up. Like, if I have to, I'll change it up. I'll, have to, I'll, I'll fight on the inside. I'll try to be rough. I'll be, I'll be rough and tough and everything, but I'm more of a boxer, counter puncher, uh, try to stay long, but I'll change it up sometimes. And I grew up watching more of, like, Roy Jones Jr., Floyd Mayweather, like, all those counter punchers, all those smart counter punchers. Is that why you felt like you had a lot of amateur success, uh, being yeah. more of a boxer? Yeah, I would say that. I mean, even in the amateur, bro, like, I couldn't... The amateur is more like points, 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 so I couldn't fight like how I wanted to. I, I always wanted to just, I, my style is just staying calm, staying calm, throwing smart punches and everything like that. And the amateur, I couldn't do that. I had to go, I had to go, 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 go. So now that I'm turning pro, it's a, a little bit different, but it's, it, I, I love it. I love it because I, I'm able to slow down my pace, slow down my punches, and just work on what I need to work on. And I love it, man. How many amateur fights did you have total? Around like 110. 110, 110 fights? Yeah, 110 amateur fights around there. And then as you mentioned, you were number one recently in the, in the USA Boxing. Yeah. Now finally turning pro, what weight are you going to turn pro at? I'm going to start at 147. Yeah, 140, yeah, I, walk around, I walk around like 160. 162 around there, but I'm gonna go, go down to 147. I fought at 156 in the amateur, but my dad never wanted me to cut too much weight because it was uh, it would have just harmed me in the long run. So 147 in the. Bro. And then at the pros, you know, because amateurs, you got it's the same day weigh-in. Yeah, so, bro, for like a week, you have to stay in the same, same weight. weight. So, yeah. So literally, I'm just gonna yeah go down 147. I should I should make it pretty easy. And then fight night, you could be like 160 and be solid. Yeah, probably. You know? Like 156, 160, around there. Now, we had a big fight uh, this past weekend. Uh, Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, Javante Tank Davis, seventh, seventh round knockout. What did you think about the fight and, and the, the knockout and everything? Yeah, bro, I mean, Javante's smart, bro. He's, uh, he's very intelligent in the ring. And uh, I, I expected that to happen, but not not to a body shot because he i mean you don't really see him throw too many body like deadly body shots like that but that's that's the thing about tank you never you never, you never expect like you never expect how he's gonna hurt somebody or how he's gonna drop somebody or how what he's gonna do he's just so smart in there that he can switch it up any anytime he can put pressure he can box he, he's small but he, bro, he, has, he has a lot of power what what did ryan what went wrong for ryan garcia i i would say he got it a little too eager he got a little too eager. I mean, I mean, that's what that's what happens. He was uh, he was just too fighting too emotional, fighting too emotional. He wanted to knock him out so bad, and that's where he got caught. Boom. And and Durante Davis is so smart that during the press conferences he was getting them emotional, getting them emotional, getting them a little mad, a little mad. And then once the fight came, this dude was calm, calm, calm. And then right when the opportunity, boom, he got him. So, you, think, mean, you think being able to maintain um, his, uh, Tank, being able to maintain his, his patience and his yeah, composure, yeah. and then Ryan being over anxious, that was that was one of the key things in the fight. Yeah, I mean, bro, that, that's 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 one of the key things for for all of Durante's fights. Look at it, Roly, same thing that happened there. This dude was he was fighting, him, trying to knock him out, and then he got caught. Uh, Durante's so smart in the ring, he's so patient in the ring that he just. He's, that's how that's how that's how good he is. That's how patient he is. Not a lot of fighters can be that patient where they're losing rounds, but they know what they're doing. Now, a lot of people, right? They're making a big deal about Ryan Garcia saying that yeah. he quit, that he should have gone on. What do you, what's your take on that? I would say, I mean, you can't. The people, most of the people that say that stuff is they've never been in the ring in their life, so they can't really say nothing. Nobody knows that if he was hurt, or nobody knows how he felt. So. I would say nobody can really say anything unless you're actually in the ring and actually got caught with that kind of punch, especially against Tank. Especially you think tank. you think when guys get hit by a puncher like Tank, then they question themselves? Like Hector Garcia, for instance, when he went yeah. back to the corner, he was like, I can't see. Yeah, yeah. And he probably could have came out. You yeah. know, he probably could see. 
but it's like once you get hit by a punch like that, guys kind of just cave in and then yeah, and that, quit. That, that's where the mental that's where the mental part of the game comes in. A lot of a lot of boxing is all mental. A lot of it's mental. I mean, you can be the best best fighter, best talent in the world, but if you don't, you're not strong mentally, then you're not gonna really do anything inside the ring. So that's where the mental part comes in, man. I mean, you never know, maybe Ryan could've gone up, maybe he could've done something, but I mean, just, that's how it is. That's how the fight game is. Tank was right on him, and like, and Ryan kind of looked up and saw Tank. Do you think Ryan kind of just didn't want to get up? Because if he got up, he more than likely was gonna oh, yeah. get stopped, and that was, he probably saved himself just from a, a knockout, from a, a bad beating. Yeah, I mean, Tank is one of the most vicious finishers there is, so I mean, I, I, I can see why Ryan didn't get up, but if I were, if I were him, I would have I would have gone up on my shield. But that's just that's just, it's different for everybody. Again, we don't know we don't know how he felt in that moment. Maybe he couldn't get up. Maybe it was something where he just paralyzed because that that's that's what those body shots, the liver shots do to you. They paralyze your whole body. So maybe he actually couldn't get up. But that's that's one thing that we'll never know. The only person that knows is Ryan. All right, man. And then leaving off, how was your last fight? You had your last amateur fight yeah, two weeks yeah. back. How was that? Uh, I mean, it was awesome, man. I mean, I was, I enjoyed it. I, uh, it was very, I mean, very exciting because it was again my last amateur fight, so it was awesome. And all the people that came to support me, it was, it was amazing. There was a lot of people, and it was very, very, very emotional on my, my part because I mean, I grew up in, I grew up in the amateurs. I have been an amateur for what since I was seven. So that's around 11 years, and I mean it, it was awesome, man. I, I'm, it was uh, it was an amazing experience, and I'm excited to start now training for the pros and hopefully turn pro in a couple months. All right, man. Sebastian, Sebastian Juarez turning pro. Sure. I, I will trade any any month, any time frame you got. Hopefully, hopefully I'll make pro for you in June. Okay, hopefully. great. Yeah, hopefully. That, that's right. the plan, but we'll see. We'll let, see. let the fans know where to catch you on social media. Oh yeah, on, on Instagram, I am Sebastian Juarez, and same thing on uh, Facebook, I am Sebastian Juarez. Follow me. Appreciate you much.